Hello, everybody. Well, it's not 10 o'clock. It's uh, 1 o'clock, but it's Saturday, and it, I'm Connie Meyer, so it's still to 70 and beyond. The reason I came in a little bit late this morning is because I wanted this lovely lady to join me. Um, some of you may know her. Her name is Kirsten, Kirsten O'Shield. And um, I met, how long ago? Oh, my gosh. Probably seven, six, seven years ago. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. So it was quite yeah. a while ago. She did a presentation at the state meetings for Women's Council of, Mil of Realtors in California. Mm -hmm. And she was up in the front talking. And before she was finished, I was back signing up to be coached by her. <laughs> so um, I always felt, because I'm only 5'2", I've got white hair, I'm an old lady, and I would go to these networking meetings and, you know, I've sometimes felt like I wasn't being seen. And um, so uh, I decided that she was exactly, exactly what I needed. So when she walks into a room now, everybody goes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> nice posture. <laughs> Kirsten is a body image strategist. So mm -hmm. thank you so, so much for coming oh, to see me. My pleasure. It's absolutely my joy to be here with you i just i adore you i love everything that you do um and i love the energy that you bring to not only who you are but to everyone around you i mean that was something that stood out to me immediately and, and that i remember when you came to me and said oh man i just really don't feel like i'm being seen and I thought, my goodness, there's this ridiculous amount of light in you, woman. Let's get that shining and going. It's funny. After I signed up with you, mm -hmm. I went to my cousin would always have these get togethers. And I went to this get together and I was telling them about you and that I'd signed up to be coached by you. And one of the gals says, what do you mean you don't think you're being seen? I go, I don't feel like I'm being seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she fixed that. I no longer have that problem. As a matter of fact, maybe I've gone a little bit too far the other way. Not, no, uh, no. <laughs> so, Kirsten, why don't um, why don't you tell them a little bit about your pillars and what it is that you do? Absolutely. So, I am the nation's leading body language strategist, and most people think, oh, okay, you're a body language expert, and, and that they're not the same thing as a body language strategist. We're looking at something a little bit different. Body language experts, they look at what are you doing with the outside of your body of just the movements. And these are parts that we use, but it's, you know, oh, I flick my hair. Okay, that means I'm feeling fun and flirty. Or, uh, you know, I'm chewing on my nails. Okay, that seems I'm nervous. I mean, these things seem obvious. But that's an example of, as a body language expert, we're looking at the reactionary body and what the movements are. As a body language strategist, I'm working with my clients to look at what are your values? What are your key gifts that you bring to the world? And now how do we help your body to shine and exude that in the highest optimum way possible? And so with Connie, you know, I, I saw all this light that was in her very, very easily. But I could tell she felt very trapped, you know, in yeah. that moment in life. And so we worked on what's your value set. And now let's work with how you're showing up in those ways. How are you allowing other people to approach you? What are you doing with your face? What are you doing with your hands that actually now magnetizes people to that light that you have just shining like crazy and help her to feel more seen, which is what, you know, was the goal when yes. we were working together. But, oh, my gosh, has that goal exploded and gone and is now touching so much in the world, which is what I love about what I get to do as a body language strategist and working with amazing clients like Connie. Well, I can tell you, if you feel like you could use a little help, she's your gal because she does amazing, amazing work. So here about um, – when were, you, when were you here for it? Two years ago. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. She came. She was the keynote speaker for the National Association of Women Business Owners here in Las Vegas for the luncheon. Mm -hmm. And she very graciously called me and asked me if I would be her guest. And um, I said, sure. So we get I get there a little bit early so we can chat. And um, I, she's asked, she asked me what I was doing. Well, I had been really, really sick in January and February. This must have been like in April or something. Yes. Yeah. And... Um, I sitting in a chair, I'm not a TV watcher, but having the TV on and just staring at a chair in a chair for two months obviously had a serious effect on my 
personality, to say the least. And I had during that period of time that I was quitting. I was quitting everything. I was going, my son was looking for property in Bend, Oregon. I had decided that I was going to go there, have a, get a little tiny on the property with him. Uh, my other son says, well, you think you're going to be a hermit or what? And I said, <laughs> he says, that's not you, mom. And I said, well, but, but that's what I was like. So I'm telling her this. And she, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for, I would be sitting in a little tiny house bored to tears in Bend, Oregon. Because she looked at me and she says, you don't have a clue. You don't have a clue what you're doing. And, and so you tell the rest of it. Well, I remember I was when you said, "Yeah, I'm just, I think I'm done, and I'm just, I'm gonna go live in a tiny little place out in the middle of nowhere with, you know, my son's out there." And I remember you thinking, "Connie, my goodness, you have no idea how much impact you have on people, and how much people need to see your light." How inspire? I told her, "I'm like, oh, you're so inspiring. People look to you." so often because it, and it's the beauty of of your experience it's the beauty of your age that does inspire people and i know there's a lot of women out there who feel like oh i've been aged out of this and connie is the perfect example she has just jumped into her light ten thousand fold every year she keeps going and that was the, and i said that is not that if you stop now that gift is going to stop and that gift is not just meant for you. You were put here to gift that and touch other people. And I said, I tell your story all the time. And she goes, what? <laughs> I said, yes. I, 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 said, I, I couldn't believe it. I was sharing your story about the you know 70 and beyond. And I, I said, you've inspired so many people just because I think you're so awesome. And I just feel so <laughs> compelled to share your story because it's amazing and um and so i was so thrilled when you called and said okay all right i heard you okay i'm gonna keep going i was like yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. well i i don't even remember i know you talked about your pillars of leadership yes. but um but i i really didn't hear anything she said because <laughs> because i'm sitting there thinking okay connie what the hell is really going on here mm -hmm. so i came home and I sat down and I figured out all the things I, and I've told this story before, all the things that I tell everybody else to do, three, write down three things you're grateful for, three things, successes you had the day before, write your vision, listen to your vision. I hadn't done that in three months. And so I'm sitting there and I'm, I start to write my vision. And then I think about this time I spent seven years as a FEMA inspector and trainer. And I'm like, what the hell does that have to do with anything that I'm doing now? Well, uh, be careful what you put out to the universe because it will show up. And your gift will hear you. Yes. <laughs> so about three weeks later, I get an email uh, from the education director at the California Association of Realtors. And she was sending out an email to a bunch of the authors saying, these are topics we're looking for. What, are you interested in writing any of these? One of them was on disasters. And... I wrote her back at me. They said, nobody gets that one but me. And um, so I, it started out, it was going to be a three-hour course. This next week, I'm finishing up the final touches. It's, it's launching in California. I'm going to launch it on online ed. It's going to be a four-course certification. And within the certification, there's going to be a course for consumers and a book for consumers that anybody that goes through the certification can offer to their communities and to their mm. potential clients and agents. And my vision for this is in five years, they say that 16% of Americans are prepared. Mm. I don't buy it at all, yeah. but even using that number, I want to take it from 16% to 25%. That means 30 million people. So I'm going to need everyone's help and getting the word out about being prepared for disasters. But none of that, none of that would have happened if she hadn't called me out. So one of the things that I think is really important, if you see somebody making a big mistake, you've got to speak up. Yeah, yes. You've got to speak I up. I totally agree. Well, and one of the things that, you know, through the training that, you know, when I was coaching you and, and also in that same conversation is, always showing up 
for your people. And that's uh, one of the hashtags that we have for the Body Language Strategy Academy, which I'm the founder and CEO of. And everything we talk about, uh, you know, you mentioned the four pillars. So we, we train in the four pillars, which are really how are you showing up in your confidence, your competence, your trust and approachability when you're stepping into conversations and um, honestly when you're stepping into any room right how do you magnetize people to you with that and I, I it's been my joy to watch Connie just not just step into it I mean she's jumping full in but why those things can happen and why we have that conversation and I fully believe the conversations you're gonna have stepping forward is you have to step into those very real conversations and you do it with love. And this is something I say to my kids all the time. It, you always step forward with honesty and honesty is always delivered best with kindness. All right, so I will say, we're gonna have a moment here. We're gonna get very, very real and this is all coming from love because I want you to be your best. Actually, that's one of the ways that she coaches because <laughs> um, uh, she, she called me out a few times when I was, when I was, she was coaching me and uh, but she does it she does it with love she does it with kindness and and she really gets to get you to understand exactly what it is so tell us about the academy oh i'm so excited about the academy so what we've done is uh all the coaching that i first when i first started creating body language strategy and working with my clients we have now put it into three very specific areas where, because we're human beings, right? And all of this comes from our communication being 80% nonverbal. So much of that is instinctual. So much of that is universal. So we do have the universal first level where you're stepping into what is it that we all respond to, those it factors. When a person walks into the door and you're like, that person's important. Who is that person, right? What is it that magnetizes, magnetizes us to that person? And so the universals cover those particular aspects. And then level two is where we now get into personal mastery. So this is where we're now working with your personal value sets, your mindset. Uh, we get into your personal energy set too. Uh, you know, what is your natural energy set? Because some people will try to go, well, I want to be just like Kirsten. Well, our energies are different, right? And and you're meant to show up uniquely as you. So what does your light look like? And what, what are your gifts that you bring forward? And then um, also looking at now, how do we engulf that and now bring all that into the physical set, which is now your body language. So it's very, uh, you know, we're, we're working from the inside out. So every ounce of who you are is now shining like crazy into your greater self. And then the top level, that's where we're now working with leadership. How are you showing up as a leader, right? Uh, either managing teams. Uh, I, I'm very blessed to work with Fortune 500 companies where I'm coaching other um, directors and how they're working with their teams. And so now we're looking at that executive top level of leadership and management and how you're showing up there to now help all your team show up with their absolute greater self stepping in and helping the whole team up level all together. Awesome. Yes. And all of that is now going to be available. The Academy is online. It's the BLSacademy.com. That's the actual URL. If you look up the body language strategy Academy, you can also find it there. Well, we'll post it in the, in the yes, thing so that we can make sure. So, um, do you know how she got to be a body image strategist? Body language. I'm sorry, yeah. body language. <laughs> <laughs> body language strategist. Yes. Um, she's an opera singer. I am. That, that's where I began. So how did, okay, so explain to them mm -hmm. how opera helped you to move into this new role. Well, in opera, you have to hold so much presence for a very extended amount of time. Um, opera is really the highest level of, of the singing world for many reasons, not only for the beautiful voice, but it's also um, everything's done at just such a intricate level of the costuming, the um, all the sets, the, the beautiful, the full piece orchestra that's playing, you know, it's done at such an exquisite level and such an 
intensely emotional level everything i mean when you go to an opera and it's not the same as listening to opera on the radio so i always encourage everyone at least go to one opera because it's a full body experience you feel it in your bones you feel it in your heart and soul um, it's very highly emotional and we have to hold that high emotion high production presence for two to three hours so it, it's very intuitive, it's very intricate, um, being very, very on and holding that in front of thousands and thousands of people. So when I went from opera in the performance and then realized, wow, there's such a huge correlation between what we do as performers to what people can do to hold that kind of presence and magnetize on a regular basis for your business and draw business to you, uh, that's when the light bulb went off. Uh, really, this is, it's one and the same. Wasn't the title of the of the talk you gave it something like Marketing Without Talking or something like that? What was the name of that? Oh, uh, yes, so mar that's, there's two of them. There's Marketing Without Money, so there's that one, but there's also um, How to Create Influence and Impact Without Saying a Word. Yeah, I, I yes. love that, I love that. So. Um, so yes, I'm telling you, this is one powerhouse woman. And um, if you think you would like a little help in your marketing efforts, um, you definitely need to reach out and, and reach out to her. So thank you. Um, actually, could you? Would you mind? I didn't ask you beforehand. Sorry, so I'm putting <laughs> you on the spot. That's all right. Would you give them an example of the offers that you do, the way that, where you, you change this, the facial expression, and and can you do that? Um, yes. So. There's, uh, I, I could do a real quick example. So as Contessa, who is the Countess in The Marriage of Figaro, which is a role I played, you first see her, she's very distraught. She, this is the beginning of the second act because she just found out her husband, the Count, is cheating on her again. So she's she holds herself very regal. You know, everything she does is, is held very regal this way. Um, but she's distraught. So I, I've got this upset look on my face for three hours every night for weeks because, you know, opera pr productions <laughs> go for a long time. So I'd have to massage my head every every night because my forehead would ache. But as Contessa, uh, you know, I'm addressing everything in a very fluid manner uh, because she's royalty. She doesn't have to do the work. She tells her, you know, her subjects what to do. So, um, the first piece that she sings is called Por de Amor. And a, a little section of that, she begs to God. And, and it starts with, to bring him back bring her back his love her husband and if she can't have it she would rather die so contest it she needs some therapy so, so yeah <laughs> Mozart didn't write that part in but you know <laughs> that goes without saying uh, but there was another character that I played Anina and she was the the nursemaid to the main character Violetta in the opera La Traviata now she was also distraught because Violetta's dying she really was the one who brought her up, so she considers her her daughter, but because of her status as a servant, she doesn't have any right to step in and help or do anything. So she's distraught. So me, I'm distraught again for another three hours for weeks on end, <laughs> massaging my forehead again. But uh, because she was old, I, I really, I kept all, my body very close in. Um, I always, my hands were nervous, uh, you know, very tight. So it, it, it wasn't the fluid openness that I had for Contessa, even though the facial expression was the same, all the body movement was different to show the age. And, and I, um, I always kept myself a little off center. I never really kept myself for full center to the audience because I wanted that feeling reserved and trapped kind of feeling. So it's the exact same body, right? Mm -hmm. the exact same body here, but how I was moving my body gave the impression of two completely different women, which emotionally helps you to respond to those two women differently. 
right? And so that's the same thing that we do in real life is how we hold our body, that the kind of openness or closedness that we express or um, that either nervous energy or very relaxed and fluid energy completely changes how people see us as a person, which means that changes the lens of how they're going to interact with us. So that's why body language is so influential in our relationships, whether they're personal or business, right? right? It's in every aspect of our life. How we show up is the permission that we give for how people are going to interact and view us. Right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. My pleasure. I wanted to hear you say that was amazing. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> so um, I just I can't say enough. I, I, you know, I've talked about you. Oh, I've told that story over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I cannot. I'm so grateful. I'm able to thank you live oh. because you really did save my life oh, honey. and I, I truly, truly cannot tell you how grateful I am for you making me stop and think because none of this would have happened. None of this. And it's the best crystalline moment I've ever had. Mm. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, well, it's, I'm so honored that, uh, you know, I, again, whatever your beliefs are, you know, God put me in that moment to be that gift not only to you, but to now everybody else. You know what I mean? That, that was my honor to, to be able to be that message. And I think we all need that. I think it's important. I think so too. Yay. Let's toast to that. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, everyone. If you know somebody out there that maybe needs a little conversation, don't be quiet because mm. you may change their life. You may save their life. Yeah. And, and so just do it. Okay. All right. How about that for it to 70 and beyond? Love it. And, and she's nowhere near 70, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just want to, I'm sure you can tell that, but uh, she was gracious enough to come on with a 71 year old. So anyway, have a beautiful week. Find that person that might, you might need to have that conversation with. Mm -hmm. If it's you find somebody that maybe can be honest with you and see what they see, because we never see ourselves the way, just like I didn't feel like I was being seen. And everybody else was like, what are you talking about? And so if you're feeling that way, find somebody close to you to have a conversation with and say, how do you, how do you perceive me? How do you see me when I walk in a room? And, and if you need help, she's your gal. And I will post it all on Facebook for you. Okay. All right, guys, have a beautiful week. Have a wonderful to 70 a week and I have a wonderful 70 and beyond if you're that age. Bye now. Bye.